who watches them, who makes them, and some of the features of the games featured in them. Now we are left with the two most important questions. Who cares? And so what? Why do Let's Plays have a lower status in society compared to, say, whatever's in the bowels of Netflix these days? Is it just the amateur status of the video creators? Or are there other factors? One major factor may be the target audience. When you picture a gamer, the image is of a grubby teenage boy. Though gamers are getting older and less male, the stereotype persists. Gaming is still seen as kid stuff, and kid stuff has a lower status in general. Gaming adults are seen as neckbeard basement dwellers who haven't grown up. Gaming isn't taken seriously. Though much of the public has grown up with video games, from arcades in the 80s to home consoles and onto online gaming, gaming tends to be something you hide. It's difficult to explain games and especially Let's Plays to your grandmother. Though she might be on the couch with you every Sunday afternoon cheering on her favorite football team, she won't get why you watch people play fake video games. Hopefully, as more people grow up with games and as people of all ages start to play them, gaming will have less of a stigma attached. The majority of famous Let's Players are male, and the viewing demographic is also assumed to be male. Why? Though women play about half of all video games, they are still seen as a subcategory, as not worth being the focus in video game discussions. From the little sister having to watch her brother play since he wouldn't hand her the controller, to the mothers, girlfriends, and wives viewing from the couch when their men play games, women seem to be used to spectating games rather than playing them directly. Perhaps there's fewer female Let's Players since so-called girl games, like casual games, puzzle games, and visual novels, aren't particularly good for the genre. More action-based gameplay may create more stuff to comment on that would attract Let's Players. Just because things aren't stereotypically girly doesn't mean girls won't like them. I'd be willing to bet that on YouTube there are more men making beauty tutorials than there are women making Let's Plays. If you're over 40, you're probably asking yourself, who cares? What does it matter to me? Well, in our changing media landscape, what the kids are watching today can affect what you're watching tomorrow, and also how you're watching it. The younger generation is making a move towards free and on-demand media products. How many 20-somethings do you know that are paying a cable bill? How many of them have Netflix? It seems less and less likely that a person under 40 will sit down in front of the TV exactly at 8 o'clock in order to watch a primetime show. In the early 2000s, they would DVR it to watch it later at a more convenient time, but nowadays they would wait until it's uploaded onto a streaming service before watching it. YouTube, then, is the ultimate streaming service, since everything is available to access immediately after the creator uploads it. And with internet speeds what they are these days, buffering has nearly become a thing of the past. Though traditional media is not going away anytime soon, many people are supplementing it with online and amateur media, since to them they are both valid means of entertainment. Twitch is more like traditional TV, since you have to tune in at a certain time to watch it live, if you're after a certain event or Let's Player. However, watching Twitch is more like browsing through cable channels, since there's always something available, and you don't care too much about what it is or who's making it. Younger people are also moving to a free or nearly free model of media consumption. With subscription services like Netflix or Spotify, you pay a cheap monthly fee, usually around $10, and gain access to ideally all the movies you want to watch or all the music you want to hear, without having to pay piece by piece. Once you pay, the rest is free, if you get my meaning. Services like Hulu and YouTube are free to use but ad-supported. Though online ads are usually shorter than traditional television ads, sometimes with options to skip it part of the way through the ad. Watching YouTube requires no cash to trade hands, with the cost merely being your time and attention. However, people hate ads. Hulu Plus and the new service YouTube Red are a take of the subscription model, where you pay monthly to not see commercials and gain access to a little bit of exclusive content. PewDiePie and Rooster Teeth have exclusive Let's Play videos on YouTube Red, though the majority of their content is still free to watch. And of course, many people use ethically dubious ways of obtaining media for free, from ad blockers and VPNs to just downloading and torrenting the stuff. Kids these days are getting used to the idea that media should be free, which does not bode well for professional producers, since media is, of course, not free to create. If producers make what people want to see, what will they make when part of their demographic is of no use to them? Since most television producers are ultimately beholden to the advertisers who sponsor the show, if the advertisers do not see the returns and demographics they want from a show, they will stop paying. The shows the producers make in the future will reflect what people want to watch today, which may be different from what they've seen in the past. Will a Let's Play be coming to a television near you? Probably not. But will the whole media landscape be changed because of these seemingly harmless videos? Quite possibly. 
I hope you've enjoyed this little adventure of ours. We've been to the ninth ring of the internet and back and lived to tell the tale. And hopefully you've learned some things along the way. So, next time you sit down to watch that old rerun of Matlock you've seen 30 times, why not reach for your computer and watch a Let's Play? You'll be glad you did. Probably.